I don't have any more dancing stories, so I'll leave it to you to pick up here. All right. This story is called Sometimes He Still Visits. Uh, my husband, I'll call him Chad, and I just bought our first home a few months ago. We were so excited. We got a great deal because the homeowners were eager to get out. A friend is an inspector and made sure everything was in tip-top shape with the home. They told us the roof needed to be replaced, and the homeowners immediately had it replaced, and we went into a contract. I wondered why they were so eager to leave. To paint a better picture, they were asking for three hundred ninety-five, and they sold us all for three hundred. Chad said jokingly, I bet the house is haunted. We didn't care about that, as we had just moved from an apartment that was built in 1890, and it was originally in the town morgue. Anywho, we finally met the sellers to go over a few details of the home. The wife, Alice, wore J. Crew head to toe, had long, beautiful, curly blonde hair, and jingled from all the charm bracelets. Her husband, James, was super shy and didn't really talk. He was about six foot, extremely thin, almost skeletal, bald, and wore thick black framed glasses and a sweater vest. He let Alice take the lead on showing us the home. But he stayed close by with a smile on his face. At the end of the meeting, Alice walked us outside to our car and wishing us luck on our new venture in the same breath, mentioned they were moving because James was sick. We felt bad for them. They took such a pay cut to get out of the house and with how frail James looked and not having a single hair on his head or face, we could only assume he had cancer. Fast forward two months and I had finally unpacked the last box. Chad and I were finally feeling settled in as well. Chad works for, uh, travels for work three weeks out of the month. It always works for us. I love the alone time and we cherish the time we have together. Thunderstorms, things like that, definitely make me miss him, though. And I can't watch any scary movies by myself, knowing he won't be home to sleep next to me. One day, when he was out of town, I was at home folding laundry in the living room. I was uh, getting up to grab a basket. I noticed someone was standing at the front door. Couldn't see who it was, since we have some uh, sort of a marbled glass. I definitely didn't hear a knock or a bell. I quickly walked to my room to wait out where a solicitor had showed up at the door. They were one of the neighborhood's sons. We were supposed to be going around to sell something for school. So I walked to the front door. No one was there. I shrugged it off. Two days later, I was watching a movie, getting ready to fall asleep, when I heard our garage door open. I quickly reached for my gun and followed my dog to the laundry room to peek into the garage. I opened the door, gun in front of me, and searched the garage. Nothing. I looked outside, I saw a car driving away down the street. Far-fetched, but I decided to ask my neighbors across the street if I could check their camera footage. Their cameras weren't working. I told Chad about what was happening, and when he came back into town, he put motion sensor cameras all around our house and quickly installed a doorbell camera. We took a trip to gun range for target practice, too. He left town again the following week. All went smoothly until the last night of his work trip. I was laying in bed, and I saw through the closed blinds all the motion light detectors go off one by one in our backyard. And then my dog jumped right up as someone started to jiggle our back door handle. I once again grabbed my gun and I said to myself, I'm done with this. I'm going to figure out what's going on. And I called the cops first. They ride us off as probably kids in the neighborhood I live in, but they assure me they'll send a unit out. I can't wait. I go through the side door and enter our backyard. The motion light next to me turns on, and I look across the yard. By the back door, there's a man standing in the shadows. He doesn't move an inch. That's why the motion lights are not on around him. But I can see the outline of his body, tall and slender. Then I can see a shimmer of glasses. Armed and the police are on the way, so I suggest you don't make any sudden movements. The motion light next to me turns off, near pitch black, but I hear footsteps in the grass. I again yell, I have a gun and I will shoot you if you come near me. Footsteps stop. I wave my hand to set off the motion detector. The light comes on. It's James, the original owner, standing 20 feet from me, smiling. I say, James, are you okay? What are you doing here? No response, only a smile. So my mind races what to do. I hear the gate open behind me and footsteps. I spin around, point my gun, and I see April, his wife. I say, what is going on? She raises her hands in a surrendering fashion and says, I am so sorry. 
I saw James' car was gone, and I knew he would try to come here. James has early onset Alzheimer's. We moved so he could be somewhere more secluded without as much neighborhood traffic. I just didn't realize he would have an issue with the move. Cops showed up, and we explained to him that everything was fine. Told April I just can't handle her husband showing up at my house anymore. She assured me it wouldn't happen again. James still likes to visit at night. Oh, man. That's quite dandy, too. Still likes to visit at night. <laughs> what do you even do? I don't know. So it's, you know, a scary situation to be in at first, right? You don't know what to do. Yeah. You, you think someone's trying to break in. He was trying to break in. Yeah, he was trying to get in your house. I've actually heard stories like this a lot in the past. I've heard stories of people with Alzheimer's going back to their old homes and stuff like that. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, it would be a terrifying thing to happen to you. I read one where this guy had bought something at a yard sale and um, the, he had bought it from a, a son was selling his parents' stuff. You know, they were Alzheimer's. His dad had Alzheimer's, couldn't take care of himself. Right. And that sword, I guess, is important to the old man. And he ended up going to his house and trying to retrieve it. Yeah, that is, uh, it's rough. It's a rough situation, obviously, because people with Alzheimer's, you know, they don't. Yeah, you know, they don't know what they're doing really, um, and they're just trying. To, they're still living through like an earlier time, basically, in their life. But it's such a creepy situation to be in. You can imagine how horrifying that whole set of scenario had to be. You know, this guy, you can see him in the dark, much like. Not to cut you off, but the scary part was when the motion light went off. Yes, because you had that time lapse where you can't see. You've got a gun, you're trying to defend yourself, you're trying to wave and get that motion light back on. And you hear those footsteps. And, yeah, you don't know what's going on there. And, you know, you think about that. Uh, it's very similar to the the, the Bushman. Uh, he was in the dark. He, he just saw the, the shadow of him and by the silhouette. She just saw an outline of this guy. Didn't know it was James. You know, she knew it was James. What the hell was James doing there, right? It would... Well, James is lucky he didn't get hurt yeah she had tremendous uh, firearms control there because she did just go off yeah that was a crazy one uh i, I was reading that i was like man i feel bad for this guy right because yeah. he got you but you also like this woman was being terrorized unknowingly by him and she held it together but she could have easily killed him or his wife when she came up behind him behind her well, the fact that he continues to go over there is concerning. That's when he got to make Carmen himself and possibly others. So, I mean, that's yeah, she, a tough situation to be in. Yeah, that's bad. But, yeah, hopefully the wife, his wife gets it you know, under control. What is, I wonder what it is about nights that he likes to go over there at night, you know? You know, I actually heard something about something about nights with people with Alzheimer's being a, like a trigger or something that causes them to, to go do something. I don't know what it is, but, like, it's the thing with a lot of things. Like, people get their more pain at night. Like, if you have a toothache, it hurts more at night than it does during the day. And that's like, a, for a lot of people, it's like an established fact. And if you have kids, they seem to get sick at night, yeah. Yeah. So, something about the night, it just changes people. Somebody said, there's a lot of comments during it about not going into the garage. So I'm still wondering, did they get the, was it like an electronic garage or like? So I believe it was probably an electronic garage and he probably had uh, a key still to it. Oh, so he had a button. Because he was still in his car and he drove off. Oh, oh he came to driving. A... That's right. That's right. So he probably came to his senses at the last minute and drove off and then, yeah, you know, went back, obviously, a couple Ooh, months later. got to get that guy about the ability to get to keys, man. Yeah, for one thing. Yeah, he definitely shouldn't be able to get into that car. That's, you know, tremendously dangerous for him and others. But yeah, that's crazy, right? <laughs> it is. Somebody said cats and dogs do that too. Did I tell you about this dog that I had back in the day? I used to live out in the middle of nowhere, and I had a friend that lived even further away in the middle of nowhere. And we were moving to into a town, so we were getting rid of the dog. So we thought, who better than... Uh, my good friend that lives out in the middle of nowhere. The dog can run around like it does at our house. We took the dog there, and uh, this is all in the process of moving still, right? So right. took the dog there. I think I stayed the first night with my friend, and the dog was there, stayed there. Next day, parent came, picked me up, 
And they call me later that day and they're like, the dog's gone. And I'm like, oh no, what the heck? Yeah, I ran away. Like maybe it'll come back. The day goes by, the dog didn't come back. So the following day after that, we're moving stuff and we go back to our house to get a load of stuff. And the dog is on the front porch. Over 13 miles, this dog went to go back home. That's crazy. It has nothing to do with the 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 story with the old man, I guess, but the comment triggered that thought. Yeah. But I guess, you know, people find their way back. Yeah, they do. That's a long journey for a dog, I feel like. It is, yeah. That's a that's a good job, uh, especially if you hadn't done that journey before. Yeah, it makes you wonder if the dog had, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like, how far are you wandering away, you know? like no, no shit. Do you know where you're going? Like, how did you know where to go? Like, if you're just like a kid, right? Because let's say the dog is like a Homeward Bound movie. The dog wouldn't have the intelligence of a little kid even. But if I just took my daughter, and it sounds terrible, in the middle of nowhere, like, you're not going to find her way home. How's this dog going to find its way home? Like, it's nowhere near there. It's not a good comparison. Well, it's all in its nose, man. Even like a pig is really smart, right? But like, that's a far away. Yeah. This dog did, though, dude. So we kept the dog, and that's when it went into town. And you remember the dog? It's the same dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. The dog that would get out, then go to your house. And yeah. Same dog, dude. Just would not. <laughs> that's funny. Couldn't be contained, you know? Yeah. Nevertheless, this is, a, this is a creepy one because it could easily happen. It's very realistic, the story you just shared. And I'm sure it happens every day to people. Yeah. And it's also kind of sad. It is cat. It, why don't we go to this? Your sad stories all the time here on this show. I don't know. Well, you might have to it. have your own spinoff show. Your sad yeah. stories. Oh my god, that'd be a rough one to get through. Jack can make the cover art. Probably just rip stories from this one and do it because there's so many. But that's that's a that's a good story to share though. But it is it is sad, and you know that happens to people all the time. And I'm just glad it hasn't ended worse yet. If it's still happening, I don't know how it's going to end, but. Well, she shared that story yesterday, so... Oh, okay. Fresh off, hot off the rest. Yeah, so, like, he still, still visits, so it's still happening. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it gets better, uh, you know, or at least doesn't get worse. Yeah. Jeff Townsend Media. CG, good night! And the question is, do I stay here? Will you be back? Are you gonna come back? Will you be back? Are you coming back?